AI is taking over the world, including the art world. It's stealing people's artworks and style. Some people are posting it as their own original artworks. And animation is becoming 10 times easier, which is putting a ton of people out of work. It's all terrible. Or is it? More broadly, art has evolved over the years with the introduction of new technologies. Like photography drastically changed with the introduction of digital cameras. But as I mentioned, it's just changing, right? There's an evolution. Now, this is not a defense video on AI, but I am playing a little bit of the devil's advocate. Think of this video as a tutorial of the different ways that you as an artist can use AI in your own art. In this video, I'm gonna be using AI in three different ways, including making a piece of art, which may or may not be controversial to some of you. But let's talk about it. If you're a student, you may have heard that AI isn't good because it's essentially cheating. In school, we're supposed to take in knowledge, learn it, and understand it, and apply it to different questions and topics and whatnot. So of course, asking an AI program to write a paper for you isn't right, because it's just regurgitating information that you should already know. But how can we use that for good? One of the top ways artists like myself get money in order to fund our art or fund projects is grant applications. Here's a sample question that you might find in a grant. This is for a project that I've titled the Utility Box Painting Program. What is your connection to Worcester? How has it influenced your interest in the painting program? And then it just wants you to describe your experience creating public art and why you believe your work would be appropriate for this project. So first I'm just going to take some notes. Cool. We have some notes. So now I'm going to ask chat GPT the best way to phrase and organize this whole paragraph. So I'm going to say, hello, you always have to be nice. I'm applying for a public art proposal to paint some utility boxes in the city of Worcester. Can you help me write a concise and specific response using formal and strong words to convey my thoughts? I'm writing a statement of interest that must follow these guidelines. Also said, here are some notes that I've written down. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. And now we press enter and we hope for the best. While it's loading up this long response, I wanted to mention that you don't want to copy this, right? It's not going to give you the best writing. You might have to make some tweaks to your question and, and, and whatnot. Here's the response. Obviously, it's a lot longer than 750. I immerse myself in the city's vibrant tapestry, diligently unraveling its cultural intricacy. You could already tell from this first sentence that the writing is so beautiful and rich and perfect for an application like the one we're applying to right now. But this obviously still needs a lot of work. So let's just take this and say that I didn't have to, you know, ask any more questions or ask it to do anything else. And in total, it gave me 1,985 words. Okay, so let's, let's cut this down. All right, cool. From all of this that it gave me, I basically just copied it and then taken the essence of this and taken a lot of the words that they gave me and basically just created this. So my stay as a college student in Worcester allowed me to foster a deep understanding of its cultural intricacies. I have a great familiarity with the local art community, mural programs, and the storied history of sign painting. The utility box painting program calls me to enhance the city's visual narrative. This is just one way we could use AI help artists and, and, um, and do stuff like this. And it's very easy to essentially just create a whole document full of your experiences and fit it to add to ChatGBT to give you something sort of a lot more palatable depending on, you know, whatever the project is. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. AI can also help if you're feeling uninspired or bored. Sometimes we as artists get artist block, which is this feeling that you cannot be creative and think creatively. And it gets difficult. How can AI help with this? There's some art generators online, but you know, those could be kind of wonky. But let me show you an example of how we can use AI to get a precise art generator to use for sketching. So we're gonna hop right into the program and ask it to create a prompt for us. I'm gonna be very specific and I'm gonna let it know the content that I wanna draw. So I include my character and then I include very specific things that I want it to describe, including clothing and the pose that I wanna draw. And there we go. It gave me three options to work with, including an urban explorer where Snacks is in a futuristic cityscape, um, wearing goggles and a utility belt, uh, and he's jumping from one rooftop to another. I think that one sounds really cool. Second one is Galactic Market. Max finds himself in a market with exotic alien species. Um, his clothing is trader attire with a mix of modern and alien inspired elements. It gives me some accessories like his boots and a device that he's holding. I like that. Uh, third one, Enchanted Forest. Snacks is surrounded by mystical trees in a forest and he's wearing an elf, elven? And he's wearing an elven inspired outfit and they give me an idea for a pendant and a bracelet. And then he also has this magical energy. Um, I think I'm definitely gonna go with that first one though. That one sounds really fun. All right, cool, hello. Let's start sketching. I'm gonna be using a mechanical pencil, this pen for inking, and then three Ohuhu colors. Yeah, let's start with the pencil. 
Hello, hello. I won't bore you with the entirety of the process of me sketching this out. You know, I like to listen to music while I'm doing this. This is just like my flow period. But I did want to pop in here and say, if you're enjoying the video, I upload content like this pretty often in tutorials and, you know, ways that you could grow as an artist. So if you enjoy that type of stuff and or process videos, be sure to click that like and subscribe button. All right, enough of that. There we go. Futuristic snacks. I'm going to go ahead and color this in a little bit now. You know, there's a lot of controversy with the debate of should you sketch every day and what does that even mean and how is that even helpful? And I think that sketching every day is important, but you have to do it right. And if you're just sitting and just sketching from your mind all the time, it isn't necessarily always the best. Um, I do recommend drawing from reference, but you know, if you do want to practice drawing from your mind, I highly recommend looking up art prompts. And I think AI generated ones are awesome and they, provide a lot of value to your art and your creative imagination because soon enough you'll be able to think up these things on your own and not have to you know rely on a program like this i don't really use these ahuhu markers that often i bought them i bought them back in 2020 you know during the big p word but i had fun doing this i i i, I love sketching i love drawing i love coming up with concepts for my boy snacks so. and there we go this is a really cool you know practice of composition character development storytelling all that jazz so yeah here's the final artwork that i made all right, on to the next and probably most controversial one. All right, the last way that we can use art is in painting projects. When we talk about using AI, I'm not gonna be just creating a digital piece of art and just showing that as my own because I don't think that that's right. But I will use it to help you find reference photos and work on some compositional things. So we're in Photoshop and I am gonna use the AI program uh, to auto generate some cool features onto this picture. So first thing I really wanna do is expand this image. Can I have a custom one, please? I think I wanna put him towards the top right of the screen and we'll just let it generate whatever it wants. And there we go. You can see the cat's body now a little bit better. Uh, and it also shows up, shows us a little bit into that box. But if you didn't know, it gives us three different options. This one makes him massive. I don't, I don't know if I like that one. Ooh, this one can be cool. I think this one is dope. Let's also expand it just a tad bit on all sides. Again, I'll just let it do what it wants to do right now. Cool. So it just expands everything. Everything looks nice. So now I think it'll be fun to start adding things to the cat because I don't just want to paint a cat, right? I want to add a little hat here. Give the cat a small hat that is green. So I'm just going to press generate. So here we go. Here's some options. This one might be cool. Give me a realistic hat. Maybe that'll work. There we go. This looks dope. So what else do I want to give this cat? Maybe I want to give him a companion in the box. Let's say I wanted to add another cat right here. Can you add a gray realistic cat next to the orange one? And we will see what it gives us. Okay. Yikes. As you can see, the app does have its flaws. Let's change this background actually. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna expand this even more. Okay. There we go. I think we could definitely do something with this. I am going to make this background blue. And what's the bluest thing in the world? What's the bluest thing in the world? The ocean. Let's go. If you couldn't tell by my lack of commentary, I wasn't so happy with these results. Okay, I think one thing it's struggling with is the angle. I'm, I'm just gonna put like ocean background because I want it to be like an above the water thing um, might be more useful for other things like adding ac ac accessories and, and whatnot. Okay, could be cool. Okay. That one looks really bad. I think I could do with this one. But yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. Although this isn't a formal review on Adobe's AI program, I would be remiss to mention that I was struggling with this. Uh, the program isn't necessarily best. Of course, AI is very new. So I was definitely struggling to get it to do what I wanted. So now my cat Hunter is on the water. Um, let's give him at least a couple coins down here. I like these. Okay, that works. That's weird. That is weird. <laughs> Did I put hand? Sandy beach. Imagine I put handy beach. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> sorry for the, sorry for the believers who wanted that. I guess sometimes if you're like imprecise or it doesn't understand the image, um, it'll just give you something that's kind of close. So that's why that hand sort of popped up because it kind of thought that I guess the box was a hand. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. I like this one, this one's cool. I think this is the image that I'll paint, but this is funny, he's like some sort of leprechaun on the beach. And yeah, and just so you guys remember, <laughs> I got all of that from this photo. So let's go uh, to the painting um, and start sketching this out. 
So if you clicked on this video because you were interested in the ways to use AI or you were just clickbaited because you were angry about the way I phrased it maybe. I'm a painter. I do a lot of oil paintings on canvas. So, you know, if you enjoy this part or enjoy that, check out some of my other videos. I, I use different techniques and methods in those as well. And this is just a pet portrait that I'm gonna make, you know, to practice my skills and to put up for sale on my website. And to end off this video, I'm going to talk about my thoughts about the viability and the morality behind using these programs and using AI as a source of inspiration or imagery. So firstly, some of you might be afraid of this being considered plagiarism. And to that, I say, what's the difference between me using this program um, to come up with this reference photo compared to me going online and finding reference photos taken by other artists or other photographers using that in my reference instead so if you're worried or you know if you have a teacher who is kind of hounding you because you use this just show them this video no don't do that don't do that uh you know i i bet there's there's an argument in there and of course there's going to be rules that they might put in place to ban this but um as of right now i think this is a very viable and awesome way to use ai in your own art as for the the other text generators, um, I think, you know, sketching or using uh, some text based things for concept art also isn't necessarily cheating. It's just being inspired and we're inspired by everything around us every day. Uh, the one that might be dicey is the first one where you use it for art grants. Now, the way that I see it and the way that I look at it is that in the way I use the program, I'm supplying it with all the information that it needs, right? Nothing is being made up or lied about. It's only just finding synonyms, right, which I would do online and anyways and also just sort of forming the sentences in a cohesive manner um, which I could do but just takes a lot of time so in my opinion this is also a very easy way to use uh, the internet to create something that um, could possibly benefit you and I guess an argument would be that some grant applications may not enjoy this because you're not being 100% honest but to them I say if I'm an artist and you enjoy my work and you enjoy what I have to offer why should the way and manner that it's presented to you in terms of an essay be judged why why does the way that it's written even matter right I'm an artist first I'm not a writer also this program and other programs like it are used every single day in offices and other professional settings which I consider grants to be and it's just using tools that are found online to your benefit, right? Uh, it could be compared to putting your essay through a, a plagiarism checker or a, a word counter or, or Grammarly, right? One of those programs. I don't really see a difference. So to you, the, the artist who's scared to use this, I would say take advantage of it now and use it to your heart's content because it could really benefit you in terms of improving your skills, but also getting opportunities that you otherwise would have not had and also applying to a bunch more opportunities because this doesn't take so long so you could apply for more. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see ya.